Hi guys, my name is Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. I am doing a sit down video today. I wish I could have done a poll on YouTube um, for this kind of thing, but I didn't find a way to do it. And I didn't find a way to do updates either that some people do. Um, so if you are new here, please like and subscribe. Um, I am not down with the editing yet, so I do not have any of the nice fancy stuff. I just use my phone as a recording um, technique. I am not good at editing at all, so I hope to figure it out soon. I hope to have more of an enhanced setup, but today's video, if you guys have not seen the title, um, is I would like to get a little personal with you guys and not too personal but um this video is going to be about get being raised in a southern baptist family and household when i was a child um so if most of you do not know um i grew up near albany oregon i am now in southern oregon and i live down here <clears throat> for very good reasons. Um, I will not get in those, into those until another video. But um, I grew up with my dad's mother. My dad was incarcerated most of my life. Um, he made some very bad choices um, that resulted in loss of life of somebody dear to me, which was my mother. Um, so I grew up with his mother. Um, she got custody of us when I was just five years old. Um, she was a normal babysitter, um, normal grandmother. If my parents would go to work, she'd be babysitting me and my brother. And yes, I do have a brother, um, but we do not get along at all. So I will not be mentioning any names. I will not be mentioning very graphic content. Um, I will try and use words that are not going to be so graphic that people are like, wow, I don't want to watch this video which is fine, but I do feel that I need to share a little bit about myself. So as I said, I grew up with my uh, dad's mom. My grandma was from Oklahoma, so she was a Southern person. So I guess I have a little Southern in me, a little bit. <laughs> some people think that I am Southern because I say some stuff like y'all and whatever. So um, most of my grandma's siblings, there she had seven siblings way back then in 19 in the 1920s was a very hard era um, it was not as advanced as now of course and that was like 98 years ago my girl would have been 98 today um, but uh, she lived in California and then she moved in Nevada and then she went to Alaska and then she retired into Oregon um, so I grew up with her most of my life, actually, since I was a little baby, but I grew up with her permanently when I was, again, like I said, five years old. Um, so she was Southern, so Southern Baptist was very, very known in my household. Um, so that brings me to today's point, is that I am was raised Southern Baptist. Now I wanna share um, a you know, the household and the experience that I did experience in being a Southern Baptist family. Um, so basically Southern Baptists, I don't know if you guys know, but they're very conservative. Um, they go by the King James Version Bible, which I grew up with, of course. Um, being in a Southern Baptist home, it was mandatory that I had a Bible, even if I had a couple of them. My grandma had like, I don't know, 20 or 30 Bibles that were only King James Version. So that's what Southern Baptists usually, um, the version they read is the King James Version. So I had one since I was like under 10 years old. I had one gifted to me. Um, I used to go to church with another family. Um, I don't think they were Southern Baptists, but they might've been. Um, but I went to church with them frequently when I'd be going to visit up in Albany, Oregon. So um, I was, raised in my own household as a child and then I was raised in other households where it was the same kind of religion. So to get into the Southern Baptist religion and my experience from being a childhood and my observancy is that it was mandatory to go to church every Sunday, every, every Sunday. 
there was no way I could get out of it. But honestly, I was so socially isolated, and I'll get to that as well, um, that I didn't mind going to church. It, it gave me a chance to get out of the house, along with school, of course. I went to school all 12 years. Um, I started in preschool and then kindergarten, then elementary, middle, and high school, of course. Um, so every Sunday, I would have to get up. I would get ready for church, and I would wait for my ride. I had a ride every Sunday um, by anybody because my grandma didn't drive very well at a certain point in her age when she got me. So... I had multiple people I'd pick me up and take me home. And then Wednesday nights, I would go to church at nighttime. But this was like a youth youth church. Um, and it was through the same Southern Baptist church. And so I was mandatory to go to that as well. Of course, like I said, I didn't mind getting out of the house because I was socially isolated. So Southern Baptist, from my experience... Um, are they're very very conservative they're very strict so you guys see me wearing shirts like this that don't show my cleavage well that was a thing there was to be no v-necks to be worn so no cleavage at all so no v-necks everything had to be buttoned up just like this so like i said as you guys notice i don't really have any like girly shirts that have like a lot of skin showing and stuff because that was definitely a no-no in the way that my grandma was raised which southern baptist no you cannot have any cleavage showing at all and if i did she'd make me go change my shirt now pants weren't so much of a bad thing um back then like dresses were mandatory but i didn't really wear dresses sometimes i did i don't i didn't really like dresses i like them more now for some reason um, but it just depends on the dress. I'm pretty picky about some of my clothing, but, um, so, um, jewelry was fine. So earrings, necklaces, bracelets, watches, um, pretty much the whole nine yards. And so the reason why nowadays I do not wear makeup and I have just no interest in it is because back then makeup was definitely a no-no. You could not wear makeup at all. Um, so I was not taught makeup. Some girls back then, they were taught makeup. Um, some Southern girls I've noticed, they still wear makeup. But I was just not allowed at all to wear makeup. There was just, there's just no chance. So I didn't get taught makeup until my dad's brother, um, was over one time. And my dad's brother was visiting every summer. And he had a girlfriend he always brought with him her. I didn't want to say her name, so I won't say her name. Um, but she pretty much thought, oh, well, I'm going to teach her makeup. Well, I told her my grandmother does not like makeup. So when my grandma found out I was wearing makeup, of course, it was a bad, bad thing. She told me to take it off. She said, you look like your mother. You look like a, you look like a, S-L-U-T and all that. It was it was a very conservative kind of thing to wear makeup, period. So that's the reason why I don't really wear makeup. I do own makeup, but I don't really wear it. I'm not really, you know, into the whole makeup kind of scene. I have worn it before, um, but I itch my face so much and wipe my eyes. Like every time that I would wear makeup, like a few years ago, I would wipe, wipe off my eyeshadow and I was like, oh, I'm so not used to wearing this. And I don't have, like, you know, concealer and all that. Um, so I'm not very into the makeup kind of scene. Because it was so conservative back then when I was growing up that you could not wear makeup at all. So I'm going to get off on the makeup tangent, I swear. <laughs> the rant is over with makeup. So other things that I could not do was wear my hair up. And you guys probably wondering why. Because any skin showing at all pretty much I can only have this showing any skin showing behind the ears and the hair the hair must have been worn down I could also not take showers in the mornings because I didn't have a blow dryer like I do now like I just did my hair I didn't have a blow dryer 
Um, so I'd have to take showers the night before and get up and just put my clothes on and go to school. And grab my backpack, put my book bag back, you know, do that. Um, so less skin revealing than very normal these days. Like there's more skin revealing nowadays than back then. Um, everybody always had stuff buttoned up and everything. So also before I was 10 years old, I was not able to pick out my clothes by myself. My grandma always, um, every night before school, or in the morning, maybe. It, it, maybe it was in the morning or the night before. But she would um, pick out my clothes for me. And I had no say on what clothes I could wear. Now, mind you, being conservative in a conservative household and not even being able to show cleavage, I was dressed like I was in her era, pretty much. Very conservative. I'd have to wear certain shoes. I'd have to wear certain pants. I'd have to wear a certain shirt. And as you can guess, back in the 90s and 2000s, that was not the style. Now, I can't show you an example because I don't have any pictures, but I'd have to wear sweater vests. I'd have to wear slacks. I'd have to wear certain shoes. And I was allowed to wear jeans and tennis shoes and stuff like that, so that wasn't a big deal. But when I was younger, I'd have to wear very, very nice clothing, like pretty much like going to church. Um, people dressed in slacks and shoes. I have to wear these shoes called loafer shoes. Now, I got made fun of extensively for those. People would be like, why are you dressed like that? And they would be making fun of me. I got made fun of a lot in school because of how I was dressed, how I would look, because I wasn't, I wasn't looking like the other people, or the other people, the other kids in school. So I got made fun of a lot, and just the stuff that I was brought up with, I got made fun of because I don't think a lot of people in my class were growing up in a Southern Baptist house. They were growing up as a Christian, but they had their own religious preference. Now, mine at the time was Southern Baptist, but as soon as I turned a certain age, then I decided to start my own religion and think the way that I want. Um, so other things that I was made to do, and I do not like to use this word, but um, after, I know it was before age 10 that my grandmother decided I was old enough and I had no choice because I was under 18, mind you this, um, that I had to start cooking. Back then, um, Kids start cooking at a very, very young age, and I mean under 10 years old. And yes, I should have been still cooked for, still taken care of, and stuff. I was taken care of, but it was more of an independent. So if I didn't cook food, and I'd have to cook food for her too, mind you that. So I had to learn very young age to cook food. And if I didn't cook food, I didn't get food. If I didn't wash my clothes myself, I didn't get clean clothes. So that made teachers raise their eyebrows and be like, who is washing your clothes? Because my grandma would send me in clothes that she didn't wash for five days. Yes, five days of not cleaning your pants. Five days of not cleaning your shirt. Of course, a teacher is going to notice eventually that, hey, um, so what's going on at home? Or... You know, are you not being taken care of properly? And so I was forced to keep my mouth shut. But the teachers just didn't believe me. They're like, oh, I don't believe you. And we're, we know that you're just trying to keep yourself safe at home because it seems like you have a bad household. And I was like, yeah, I don't have that great a household. I can tell you that. So I would come to school in jeans that you have washed in five days. Mind you, if you don't wash your clothes in a certain amount of time, they look disgusting. They look dingy. They look... Like, wow, you don't wash your clothes. Wow, you don't take a shower kind of thing. I did take showers, by the way. Um, but my clothes, I'd have to learn how to do laundry myself. And I'd have to clean her clothes as well. So pretty much all she ever did was just sit down and not take care of me. Yes, very sad for me as a child. Also, being in a conservative Southern Baptist uh, strict kind of family, 
I was also ridiculed. I was manipulated a lot into doing things that she wanted me to do for her and for myself. Um, I was yelled at a lot. Basically, nowadays, I have the tone that my grandmother has, which is a very hateful tone. You guys may not see it right now, but it is in close observancy with my partner. Now, he says he's used to it. He says, you know, he he's just used to it. But I don't like being that way. Every time I talk, I just sound like I'm really pissed off, and I'm really not, but I got, I, I inherited that from her. So she'd yell at me if I didn't do something right, if I didn't cook her food right, or if I didn't clean her clothes right, or if the kitchen was dirty and she'd come in and she'd be like, Sarah, get the hell in here and clean the kitchen. You know, it was my responsibility. It was not hers. Of course, she was older at the time, so it was a little harder for her to do things, but she wasn't incapable of doing things until a certain age. So mind you that she could have been still cooking and cleaning and stuff, but she'd make me do it. Also, my grandmother was a hoarder. And hoarder means that you keep everything. You don't ever throw anything away. So there was stuff that was piled around me all the time. She never cleaned. If I didn't clean, the house was not clean. And we all know what happens when you don't clean. You're in an unsanitary, very bad environment. And I mean very bad. Like, she lived in an old house. There would be cobwebs everywhere. There would be um, bugs everywhere. Um, she got to a certain age where she couldn't really, you know, go to the bathroom by herself. So there was that as well. There was that smell. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can, if I'm leaving anything out here. Um, I didn't get to have my own room until I was 10 or 11. Um, usually kids, even by the time they're little babies, you know, they have their own room. But when I got in my grandma's custody, I did not have my own room. I was forced to sleep with her in her bed in her room. Um, the only way that I really got my own room was one of my cousins pretty much demanded her to give me my own room. So she finally just gave in and said, okay, she can have her own damn room she says and so my cousin cleared out at least a little bit so i could sleep on the floor with a sleeping bag well, mind you that room i've never really been in for extensive amount of time because there's two bedrooms in the back so and they were both full of stuff like i said she was a hoarder she had too much stuff she never threw anything away she'd freak out if you threw anything away of hers like she would go ballistic like and I would always take the brood of it. Like, mind you, I was always the one taking the brood. There was not really anyone around, at least until I was 13. Um, but she would go very, very ballistic if you threw out even a phone bill or if you threw out the electric bill because she'd have a file cabinet and everything for them. It's like, you don't need to keep all of them. But she did. And some people still do that these days, and that's fine. But the way that she would get so angry at throwing me throwing things away it was very verbally abusive it was not hey I don't like you throwing that away it was more like yelling at me and threatening to spank me and just you know calling me names like I said belittling me manipulating me a lot of verbal abuse was in the household unfortunately like everything she said she would yell at me um, I'd always be crying because she was always so rude. Um, she'd have that hateful tone. And it was very hard growing up like that. You know, no kid, I think, deserves to be grown up like that. So at 13 years old, my father came home. Mind you, I only met my father in prison. I did not know him very well at all. So, you know, of course, I'm going to think, what is a dad? What is a dad like? You know, what is, what is um, things that I've observed of a father? Well, mind you, he did some of those things. I'm not going to say he was a totally bad father, but what he's done in his life, he's definitely a bad person and a father. 
when he came home, um, things got a little better, but with him, it made it worse. Um, they wouldn't do it in front of me, but my dad manipulated my grandmother, which was his mother. Um, I guess he was threatening her a lot. Um, he was just a very, very abusive person. He's physically and verbal. So now my grandma was not physically abusive. Except for, you know, a little spank every now and then. But that was pretty much it. Um, her helping me with my homework, I never asked her because she'd slap my hand. Um, she'd slap, she'd slap my hand. Um, she'd yell at me and be like, wrong answer, wrong answer. You know, and so I never asked her for help on my homework. I'd always go to school the next day and be like, I'm sorry, but I could not finish this homework. And of course I was in a certain program where I didn't have to finish it. It wasn't like, I was going to get an F if I did. So I pretty much just had to figure it out on my own. A lot of things I had to figure out on my own um, because I was taught to be so independent. But when my dad came home, I didn't really have to do those things anymore, which was nice. Um, he picked up the slack with a lot of stuff. And mind you, he was just not really a good dad, but he tried in some ways. So he'd take me to the store. He took me school shopping. He would take me to school and pick me up. He, you know, we did a few fun things sometimes. Like we went to the mall one time and he bought me some clothes and then he eventually got a job. Um, but the bad thing about him is that he was physically abusive towards women. That was his preference. And so you can guess I'm a woman and I was abused, and I was uh, abused, not physically, well, physically, but not in a physical manner, like where he hit me or anything, no, not like that. Um, but he did do that to his other wives, unfortunately. So, um, so this is pretty much a trigger warning. So I'm gonna put trigger warning in the title as well. Um, I was abused by him and it was not in a father-daughter appropriate way. So I'm not gonna label, you know, what it is, but I was sexually assaulted by him a lot. Um, people think, oh, it's just once. No, it was multiple times. It was horrible. It still haunts me to this day. Um, so then, you know, that started up and then my grandmother just started totally acting different and I thought it was really weird that how she was acting. And then I figured out later that he was threatening her because he was doing things with me and apparently she knew he had that problem because she figured it out. Um, and I guess he was threatening her so bad that he pretty much, or she just said, don't you dare say anything. I know what's going on. Don't you dare say anything. And I was like, oh, great. So honestly, growing up Southern Baptist, I thought, well, that's normal. Because I didn't observe many parents and how they treated their children. But I thought it was normal. I thought a dad is supposed to do that. I didn't know what a dad was. Um, so that went on for a year and a half. Mind you, I was 13 years old. I spent my 14th birthday with both of them. Um, I was always like showered with presents at Christmas time. That was like the fun time for me as I got spoiled at Christmas time. My dad spoiled me when he was home for one Christmas. He spoiled me on my birthday. But his habits were just not up to par. It, his habits were bad. I don't know what happened to him as a child, but it taught him to behave in an inappropriate manner. Um, and mind you guys, this is not easy for me to talk about, <laughs> especially because I don't always share this kind of information. Um, but when my dad got caught, um, he was not supposed to be living at home. Mind you, I didn't know that. I didn't learn that until like 20 years or 15 or so years after. Um, so I was 13 at the time. Um, he got caught a year and a half later. Um, mind you, he had other charges on him, not just for me. 
um, from other things that he did while he was out that he was not supposed to do. So like he wasn't supposed to be living at the place that I was supposed to be living at. He was only supposed to be able to visit and that was pretty much it. Well, I didn't know that and at the time, I guess he manipulated my grandma, his mother, to live there because he had nowhere else to go. Um, because he was incarcerated for a long time on very serious charges. So he got finally got caught. Um, they arrested him out of his work. And then they started questioning me. And that's when my grandma said, you better not say anything. Otherwise, I would have got my ass beat. Mind you, that was true. So as a minor, I did not say anything. Court came up for my dad's case, didn't say anything. Um, I was not allowed to go to court. I was not allowed to do those things because then I was helping my father go to jail. Now, I ran away. I finally got tired of all her shit. So my cousin and his mother, my grandma's sister, came to visit one day, um, or one time. And my grandma and her sister were fighting. And my grandma's sister's like, oh, she's always been like that. She's always been so difficult. She's just like her father. And, you know, they would always fight every time. My grandma would fight with everybody. Just everybody. I guess she went through so much shit in her life. She just didn't want to deal with anyone. So she was an introvert. She didn't deal with anybody but me. Um, but my cousin, he, you know, would constantly check in on me and my brother. And, you know, she had to answer the phone and all of that. So eventually when I was 15, I ran away um, to a household at the time and um of course you know i was in state custody i was war of the state at the time i was not even 18 years old and so the place that i went um the cops came but when i knocked at the door i was like oh great now i gotta go back to the house that i fucking hate well they pretty much we opened the door for them um, where the household I was at and you know we were nice to the officer and the officer was like hey can I speak to her alone and they're like oh yeah of course you know hey, cops you gotta do what they say so the parents went inside and the cop said first of all I want you to know I'm not taking you out of here um, we've been wanting to get you out of that house for a long long time so we're glad that you're here um, so we're not taking you out of here. We just want to make sure you have a room to sleep in, you have food to eat, you have a clean environment because we've been dealing with your grandmother for years since you were a little child. And I was like, okay. So, and I said, well, it's up, you know, unless you need a search warrant or something. He's like, no, this, it's not necessary to have a search warrant, but we are allowed to go into the house that you're in right now and check um, and see if you have a room, clean environment, food to eat, you know, like I just said. And so they came in, they just casually walked through the house, you know, not looking at anything, you know, like, oh, they're like, oh, whose room is this? You know, um, which room is hers? And so they went and the officer followed them and they, and I even showed them my room and I was like, oh, this is my room. And they're like, oh, good. You got a bed, you know, you, you know, have you ate dinner? You know, do you get fed breakfast? Do you go to school? And I was like, yeah, I take showers and all that. And they're like, oh, okay, good. So there was no questioning about it. So they let me stay there. Even though I was in a state custody and I was a ward of the state by my grandma, but since she was so bad to me, they pretty much let me stay there. Now, <clears throat> There was an incident that occurred um, uh, with my co one of my cousin's wives. Um, she did not like me at all for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it was because of my grandma and then she thought I was just like her and had bad habits um, or just a bad attitude. So she just didn't like me. So there was a sunglass incident. I put my sunglasses in my bag and me and her, I guess, had identical sunglasses. So, not realizing it, I put her sunglasses in my bag too. So then she was like, oh, you stole my sunglasses because one day she was like, I don't know where my sunglasses are. And I was like, oh, well maybe accidentally I put it in my bag because ours are so similar. 
So it just happened to be they were in her bag. So then she just started calling me out and she was just yelling at me. And then I was also complaining about the heat because I have heat intolerance. Um, so then she just like, you know, eventually just put me in the hotel room and then she just sent me home. I didn't even get to stay at Disneyland. And mind you, I went to Disneyland a lot when I was a child, but it was with other families, of course. Um, first time I went to Disneyland, I was like under 10. Um, so I got sent home on an airplane to California. Um, and I was in trouble. Very much in trouble. And then when I got home home to Oregon, which is where I've lived my whole life, I still live here, um, I got my computer taken away, I got my, my TV taken away, and I pretty much got sent back to my grandma's house just because of some damn sunglasses that I didn't even mean to take and everyone thought that I stole, which I did not. So I was forced back into a household. Um, it was a very, it was the worst time. I got in more and more trouble um, as my years went on um, because my father just went back to prison um, and I was obviously gonna retaliate. And I started getting older and I started getting into more trouble and more trouble. And I'm not gonna get into what trouble I got in, um, but I got in, a lot of trouble um, and I went to school I graduated high school I graduated everything um, but I didn't graduate with many of the other classmates that I had so um, eventually when I graduated high school I was 18 and I moved out uh, again when I was 18 years old actually no yeah, I got put in the foster care when I was 18. And I was in a couple of different homes because my grandma didn't want to deal with it anymore. She pretty much kicked me out, which mind you, I was pretty much the person that did everything for her and it was an obligation because she was my elder. And that's how Southern Baptists are raised, is that you do everything for your elders. No questions asked, ever. Unless you wanted to get your ass beat you wanted to get hit, you wanted to get, you know, swatted on the hand, like kind of like back in the day where they swat hand, uh, swat a ruler on the kid's hand. Yeah, that was pretty much me. Um, so I think that's pretty much the brew of the story. Yeah, you can hear my cat meow in the background. She's mad I'm in here talking on a video and I'm not playing with her and I'm not out there because I just woke up a little bit ago. So that's pretty much all I have to say about parts of what I grew up with and also um, uh, Southern Baptist religion. Now I am 29 years old. Um, I have not had a religion of my own. I actually stopped going to church. I know, shame on me. Um, but when I turned 18, I stopped going to church. Didn't go anymore because I was 18 and I was like, I can, you know, pretty much do whatever I want, not whatever, you know, and can't break the law. But I decided I didn't want to be part of that community anymore. I didn't want to be part of the Southern Baptist community. I didn't believe in a lot of the things they believed in. They were really strictly um, religious. If you didn't believe in God, then you were going to hell, pretty much. Um, if you didn't follow the Bible, you were going to hell. Um, Pretty much, if you did anything against the King James Version Bible, you were going to hell. <laughs> like, everything in the Bible, everybody believed. Every single inch, every single page, every single chapter. Yeah, if you didn't follow the Bible, the King James Version Bible, you pretty much were just going to hell. Pretty much sucks. So, I thank you guys for... Um, putting up with this video for over 30 minutes. I usually don't make this long of a video, but you know, I wanted to summarize stuff and let you know uh, where I came from and a little bit of a personal level because I feel comfortable sharing this. Um, but again, uh, my name is Sarah and I appreciate you guys for watching my video today. 
uh, you can like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I'm at 107 followers, or subscribers, not followers. <laughs> 107 um, subscribers. And um, I'd appreciate if you guys comment, if you guys want to reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter. Um, I have a Discord, but it's mainly for gaming. Um, I also have a Facebook. I can link all those down below. I usually do in my video descriptions, just so if people want to follow me on Instagram until I get this editing thing down, um, you guys are able to do so. So anyways, um, again, my name is Sarah, and I hope you guys um, somewhat enjoyed this video. But I did want to share my religious uh, preferences as a child. Um, the preference was actually for, so I'm not going to say preference. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching and you guys take care and be safe out there. Bye.